Welcome back to this week's Real Country File. Certainly a cold one. Our yard is completely frozen. We had quite a lot of slush yesterday. It was frozen overnight, but it was snow at first. It turned to slush. Now it's frozen. Turn it into ice. I've been ill most of the week, but end of the week getting tractors ready for the track to run next weekend in Liverpool if you want to check it out. Come and have a look at it on my channel or travel to Liverpool and come and see it when we've got over 100 tractors decorated with lights. It's going to look amazing. Anyway, this week, Stephen has visit, been visiting a dairy farm, the Pinders Dairy Farm, Damien. So we're going to go and have a look at what he's been up to there. And Andrew's been learning how to get laid. Sorry, I mean head laying. Anyway, first, over to Stephen. What a view here in East Lancashire. A lovely, lovely field behind me and a lovely view on a, well, quite a warm, actually, November day. Why have I come to this field? What's going on here? Well, let's... Uh, Let's talk to uh, to Damien Pinder now and find out exactly what's going on. So, Damien, we're here in the shadow of the magnificent uh, Pendle Hill in yep. East Lancashire. Tell us a little bit about your farm. What are you farming? How big is your farm? So, we're farming uh, predominantly grassland. Um, we're farming about 200 acres, all rented. Um, farming suckler cows, uh, sheep. Uh, and we've just uh, done a little bit of diversification into... Uh, something else with a bit of barley, planted a bit of barley for uh, combining. Um, okay. And with uh, the mainstay of our business will be predominantly our five milk rounds that we run through East Lancashire. Um, yeah. So we'll, we'll go and have a look at the, uh, yeah. the the hub of the farm, if you will, yeah. and the, yeah. uh, the the milk rounds in a bit. But this is this is your your experimental field that we're in. This is our experimental field. Tell um, us a bit about what you've done. So here. we stood here in uh, a twelve acre field. Um, I've been wanting to do something um, along the cereals line for two or three years. Uh, done a bit of research. Um, didn't want to rush into it. Didn't want to get it wrong. Uh, so I've done some some research online. Um, and this year, in September, I thought, well, I think I know enough now to, to have a go at it at least. We've got contractors in to plough it and drill it. Uh, I've put the fertiliser on it. And we've sprayed it. Um, and this is the result as of the end of November. So it looks really good. I'm really pleased with it. Um, yeah. And and why why change? You know what's what's made you think we'll not just keep animals on here. We won't just take a silage crop of it or a bailey or. I think um, I think agriculture is 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 evolving. Um, and I think if you don't evolve with it, um, there's a lot of things done in agriculture because. That's how we've always done it, um, and I didn't don't really want to to conform to that. Um, and I think everybody, or or a lot of people, are going to have to do the same thing eventually, whereas they look at something different uh, to earn some money out of. Um, and I think that that this, like I said, it looks really good. Um, only time will tell when we come to next August and we uh, we actually take the crop off. Um, but yeah. It, 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 I think we need to. I think people need to look at different things. Well, fingers crossed for that. Certainly yeah. going to uh, come along. I think when you yeah. combine it. Yeah. Um, I notice you've got a team fencing in the yeah. field next, and there's some new fences all around. Have you had yeah. a, a grant for that? Has that we been? have had a grant for that. Yeah, okay. um, a grant off the government. Um, they don't pay it all. It's only a percentage that they pay, but yeah. it all helps. Uh, fences. They can be a bane of a farmer's life. Can a yeah. fence. Um, I don't like chasing around after stock, so we thought we'd have a go at getting a grant. We've got it, um, so now we've got a contractor here doing the fencing. Super job. Well, let's head down to main farm and have yep. a look at the milk business. Absolute, Is that all right? Absolutely fine. Thanks for that, Stephen. Anyway, let's see how Angela's been getting on this week, where she's been checking out some volunteers that have been hedge laying in Cheshire. This week, I've been asked to arrive in a graveyard. It's a bit chilly. I've got my Ollie Bloggs hat on though, but I can see a group of people in a field just on the other side of this graveyard hedge. There's a bonfire going. So let's go and see what's happening over here. So I'm here now with Chris from um, Cheshire West and Chester Council. So Chris, what's happening here behind us? So today here we've got some uh, hedge laying going on with a group of volunteers and they are chopping down through the hawthorn and bending it over to create a living hedge. 
It's a traditional craft um, which um, predated sheep wire and barbed wire and it's a way of um, rejuvenating the hedge uh, from ground level. Okay, great. So, so these people are volunteers. So what sort of group or setup have you got here then? So all these volunteers um, are a mixed bunch and they, uh, we provide all the tools and all the equipment and, then, and they come along and they can uh, uh, have a go at hedge lane. Some of these have been with me now for about four or five years. Uh, and some are complete beginners. So it's nice to, for those who've been, who've got a bit of experience to be able to pass that on to uh, the, the new ones. Uh, and it's all free. Very good. And I know there's, there's certain sort of time periods throughout the year when you're able to deal with hedges. So what's, what specifically is that? Yeah, the hedge lane season starts really sort of mid-September. It used to be the end of March, but that's creeping earlier and earlier. So I would say the latest probably mid-March, um, beginning of March is probably better from a, uh, a bird nesting perspective. Uh, birds are nesting earlier and earlier now in the spring. But also the sap starts to rise and you want to really have stopped hedge laying by the time the sap starts to rise in the plant. OK, right, great. So let's just have a, uh, a closer look at what's going on in that case. Yeah. So this piece of hedge is a bit thinner than the one we saw earlier. Um, they've not, the, uh, the volunteers have not left as much on. They've taken a bit more out. So it's a bit more gappy. And, a, you know, a sheep might be tempted to squeeze through some of these holes. But actually, interesting enough, this hedge might grow better next spring because it's got a bit more light coming to the um, to these stumps um, because it, the the whole thing is a bit thinner. It will also grow from uh, from these spots here. Um, it'll it, it'll grow from there as well as the stumps um, at the base. So I can see you've got a few different tools that you're using here. So just give us an overview. What, what are these for and what are they called? Well, these are typically referred to as bill hooks. Um, many different styles of bill hooks. The one in my left hand is a Shropshire style. So that's got a blade on both sides, has it? That has a blade on both sides. You can get bill hooks that just have a flat edge on that side. Um, this one in my right hand is called a Yorkshire bill hook. So I mean, it's all kind of manual labour. You don't use chainsaws or anything these days, or how, or not. On a on a heavier, a bigger hedge, yes, you would tempted to use a chainsaw. There's no, there's nothing wrong with using a chainsaw. Um, but on a on a hedge this size, there's no real need to get in, involved with a, a chainsaw. Uh, and we use bow saws and pruning saws, uh, loppers, a whole array of other tools as well. So, Sophie, I believe that you're at Rees Heath College, is that right? Yes, yes. Yeah. So what, what's brought you here in a field in Northwich? Um, well, I'm doing wildlife and land and wildlife conservation at Rees Heath, so um, hedge laying is a, a great technique to learn, uh, which also fits in with my course. Okay, yeah, so hopefully you can put this into practice as part of your future career then, really? Yeah, hopefully. So, Chris, and I believe there's different styles of hedge laying as well. So, there tell is. a bit more about Around that. Around the country, a lot of um, uh, counties have got their own um, hedge laying style. We're obviously uh, teaching the Cheshire style. And the Cheshire style is to have a clean side and a, and a brash side. And that really grew up from the agricultural practices that were in Cheshire, where you had a mixed farming uh, regime. You might have had um, stock, whether there be cattle or sheep on that side of the field and maybe growing a crop on this side. So you wanted to protect your hedge on that side with a brash, bushy sort of side. And then on this side, you were wanting to grow your crop right up to the um, base of the hedge, try and make the most of the field. Uh, and that was the clean side. So. It's really fascinating, actually, isn't it, how you're kind of investing in the future in these hedges. So how, how long or how many years does it take for it to actually become established? So this hedge um, will be established as a living um, fence line sort of immediately, really, but it will start to regenerate this spring. Uh, 
um, and it will grow up uh, and over the next 10 to 12, 15 years, this should look a really thick, strong hedge, which will provide uh, straight rods to be, to be able to be laid again in the future. So you're continually rejuvenating the hedge uh, each time you um, come to lay it. The other benefit is uh, while it's in this sort of low state, it benefits a whole host of wildlife. A lot of um, bird, young birds will, will lay, um, nest in this uh, low hedge and uh, you provide a really good habitat for uh, a whole host of wildlife. Very good. Okay, so I need to come back in the spring and then again in about a decade and see how it's That's all it. worked out then. That's it. Excellent. So if you'd like to have a go at hedge laying as well, then contact Chris and the team. I'm sure they would love more volunteers to join them. We'll put the contact details at the bottom of this video and also in the video description as well. And if you don't live in Cheshire, then have a go at finding out where else you can do hedge laying classes locally. I'm sure there'll be a lot that you can choose from and they would love to continue this great countryside skill. That's about it for this week. Thanks to everyone that's been watching. Thanks to everyone that's been subscribing. If you're not subscribed, don't forget to click subscribe. And if you also click like, it really helps the channel grow. Just wondering, it's coming near the end of the year. If anyone wants to send up a roundup of their year that we can maybe include over the Christmas period, get in touch with us below. If anyone wants to send any reports or something that we're not covering, please be in contact and tell us what we need to be doing. Thanks again for watching. And I'll see you all next week.